Hello guys, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA predicted phenotype traits and GED match results of a catacomb culture individual from Stalingrad. This individual had Y DNA R1B, which is nowadays most typical in Western Europe. And in case you don't know, catacomb culture is sort of a continuation of the Yamne culture. Uh, this is kind of like late Yamne culture individual. When it comes to phenotype, this is what he is predicted to look like. Minus Shakoto is predicting him to have brown color eyes, Greek shaped nose and black hair. Uh, YSEC is actually giving him a prediction for dark skin and brown eyes and undetermined eye color because it can determine eye color without the main BH2 variation. And I actually was not able to determine whether or not this individual has BH2 or BH4. The file was simply too low coverage. But we do know that uh, he does not have BH3, no blue eye haplotype 3, and we also can assume that he most likely has BH1 based on some, based on some genotypes in OCA2 region. Uh, he does not have derived SLC45A2, so not European skin tone, maybe darker traits, darker hair and eye color, as well as skin tone. Um, he does have um, two derived variants in this variation of ASIP, which leads to lighter Euro Eurasian skin tone. He also has two derived variants in Keto-G's variation that has to do with skin tone. So once again, lighter Eurasian skin tone. And he has some light pigmentation variants in IRF4 and SLC24A4. What is interesting is that with um, uh, with Snipper Free, he's actually predicted to have black skin. Kind of exotic uh, result, but I don't think he had black skin based on his genotype in the Keto G's uh, variation for skin tone. I don't think this individual had black skin. Maybe he had light brown or olive skin, but probably not black. This is his results with the G25. As you can see, he's most similar to uh, Yamnens from Kalmykia, Karagash and Samara, which are all kind of similar to each other. Uh, they are all a mixture of eastern hunter-gatherers with some kind of a southern group that resembles either Caucasus hunter-gatherers or Iranian Neolithic farmers or Iranian hunter-gatherers as well. Uh, but what's interesting is that with the modern populations, he's most similar to Finns, Ingrians, Karelians, Moksha, and actually you can see even Tajiks and Darginians showing up among the closest populations. Uh, this individual can be modeled as a mixture of half Finnish East, half East Finnish, plus the other half Darginian and various uh, North Indian groups such as Jats and Karitiana are Native Americans actually. So it seems to be a mixture of uh, North Northeastern Europeans and uh, Western Asians in terms of uh, admixture. This is what he scores with Eurogenes K13. Uh, you can see he's scoring quite a lot of West Asian, but maybe not as much as I would actually expect. Uh, only 24% West Asian. This is like comparable to various Sarmatians, actually. Um, well, I guess Sarmatians do have about as much West Asian admixture as this individual, so it does make sense. And with the Oracle, he's getting modeled as a mixture of Estonian plus Tabasaran or Estonian plus Lesgin. Uh, Tabasarans and Lesgins, in case you don't know, are people in Dagestan, in the south of Dagestan. And this is what he scores with MDLPK11. As you can see, majority of him, according to this calculator's Oracle, uh, is actually Caucasus, such as 39% EHG plus 11% Iran Mesolithic. That's uh, around half Caucasus admixture. Uh, with the Oracle, he's closest to Russia Early Bronze Age, which is uh, in the European. I think it's Samara. E Russia EBA in this calculator refers to Samara Yamnans. That's what it refers to, I think. And he's actually getting modeled as a mixture of Samara Yamnans plus various European hunter gatherers. Here's what he scores with MZLPK16. I actually love this calculator. Uh, it serves a very useful purpose. You know how there is an Ashkenazi Jewish calculator on Eurogenes? Uh, there's Eurogenes JK. J14 or something that's meant to specifically target and capture Ashkenazi Jewish genetic drift. Well, this calculator targets and captures Indo-European genetic drift. So it's very useful for an individual who is actually Indo-European uh, with the oracle closest to Moksha and various Mishar Tatars, various groups in Russia. Everybody you would expect him to be closest to and with the mixed mod population oracle actually getting modeled as a mixture of European plus Tajik or European plus various South Central Asians, which is once again uh, what you would expect an early Indo-European to be most similar to. This is what he scores with PonDNA LK12 Ancient and with this calculator uh, we can see sort of kind of atypical result, not what we've seen previously. Less Caucasus hunter-gatherer and a lot more Anatolian Neolithic farmer. We see 
12 and a half percent Anatolian Neolithic farmer admixture in this individual. Uh, and because of this high Anatolian Neolithic farmer admixture with the oracle, we're going to see something very interesting. Um, still closest to Yamnens from Samara, still closest to this Yamnes Samara sample, but look at the secondary populations. It's Samara, Yamnes Samara plus Bellbeakers, or Yamnes Samara plus uh, Iberian Mesolithic, basically a mixture of Yamna and Samara plus a very significant amount of farmer admixture. Uh, it's pretty. It's a pretty major phenomenon, right? 10% farmer admixture is not nothing. So this individual has a little bit of farmer admixture relative to Yamnans from Samara. And with Gidrosia K3, we see that this individual is mostly West Eurasian um, and a little bit East Eurasian as well, but that's from the ancient North Eurasian component that was present in Yamnans. Now we will be heading over to my website and doing a trade report for this individual. Very fun stuff. Let's find him here. That's him. Catacomb individual and okay, so he's got GG in this comp variation, which typically results in a higher risk of schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. He's got AA in this variation of DRD2, which is implicated in a decreased number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain and an increased likelihood of alcoholism as well as decreased memory function. This is not a typical human genotype. Yes, I remember this variation. Uh, it's a pretty interesting variation. It's not only does it increase the likelihood of being an alcoholic, it also um, ha leads to some memory issues. Uh, so definitely very interesting variation here and very interesting genotype, atypical for humans. CC here in DRD4, which is a genotype associated with an increased likelihood of multiple mental health conditions, including novelty seeking addiction and intellectual disability. And he's got TT in this variation of 5-HTT LPR. Uh, which means that this individual does not have long form 5 HTTLPR and does not have a decrease in the risk of depression. And here, once again, short form 5 HTTLPR. So most humans have short form 5 HTTLPR, uh, but not me. Actually, not me. I have long form for both of these variations. Uh, in both of these variants, I have long form 5 HTTLPR genotype, which means I have a little bit of a decreased um, risk of depression. I'm a little bit resistant to depression, but most people aren't, and this individual is not. This individual has short 5-HTTLPR. Uh, diabetes, GG here, which means this individual has two variants for lower odds of type 2 diabetes. Uh, TT in this variation, which means great increase, precisely a two-fold increase in the risk of type 2 diabetes. Okay, uh, for Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's, uh, TT in this variation, which means no risk alleles for Alzheimer's in this APOE variation. And this is the main, this is the most important uh, variation for uh, Alzheimer's. These APOE, they're kind of like the big dogs. They're like, uh, you know how HERC2 is like the main um, the main gene that you have to look for, for eye color and hair color? Well, for Alzheimer's, it's APOE. This is, this is like the HERC2 of Alzheimer's, the most important gene for uh, Alzheimer's predictions. So this individual most likely does not have Alzheimer's based on his genotype here. Uh, for miscellaneous section, which I added recently, I just added this section to my trait predictor uh, like re literally yesterday. Uh, so this is the first video you're gonna see with the miscellaneous section. This individual does not have does not have um, this. I'm not gonna voice this. Uh, it might not be um, very advertiser friendly to put on YouTube. But you can read on the screen what I'm highlighting. Um, pretty cool stuff. So uh, thanks for watching. You can download this file. You can download this genome in 23 andme format from link, which is in the description. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. Goodbye.